so passionate about helping businesses grow and you absolutely have to market to grow your business. Give it all you got. The best is yet to come. Good morning and welcome to Chat and Grow. I'm very excited today to have Aaron Waller from Graphic Finesse. He is going to talk to us about video and ways to use it in marketing. Um, he's got a lot of experience with it. Aaron, thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure. So um, Aaron is a professional CG artist. What's a CG computer artist? Computer graphics. Okay, so he is a professional c- computer graphics artist who lives in Billings, Montana. Aaron graduated from um, graduated magnum cum laude from the Art Institute of Colorado with a b- Bachelor of Arts in Media Arts and Animation where he was given the Portfolio Par Excellence Award in both digital and flat art portfolio. Very impressive. Good job. Congratulations. Beyond his professional education, Aaron has also earned his level one certification in adaptive snowboarding from the American Association of Snowboard Instructors. As such, he is now one of only six adaptive snowboard instructors in the region. That is so awesome. So do you use that at Eagle Mount? Yep, I use that in Eagle Mount. So we go in and and, uh, it's really just to help them uh, have a little bit more of the credibility and have a professional on staff to help with our students and get them up to par so that we can rock the NAR. That's awesome. Well, I know you love, you know, do you ski or snow? You snowboard, snowboard right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I can ski, but I yeah. prefer not to. Yeah. I just know <laughs> that I, you know, like that's a big deal in the winter for yeah. you. So that's awesome. Yeah. In his free time, you can find him volunteering with the Eagle Mount, which we just talked about, hiking, camping, and snowboarding. He gains the most enjoyment from pho- photographing the vast landscapes and beautiful moments that he finds during his adventures, capturing those scenes for others to see. On any given day, you'll find him living, working, and playing under the big sky. Today, Aaron is the owner and operator of Graphic Finesse, where together his with his partner, Gina Castro, they provide video production, photography, and graphic design services that focus on consistent and recognizable branding across all media platforms. Yep. Very nice. Well, awesome. thank you again for coming. I'm really excited. So I'm just going to start out by asking you a few questions. Okay. And then um, Taylor is fielding questions as well. So again, thank you for coming um, to everyone who's watching. If you have any questions at all, um, make sure that you leave it in the chat. Like I said, I'm going to ask Aaron some questions first. I'm going to kind of hog the time with them a little bit. But be sure to send those questions in. And um, then after a little bit, we'll actually start getting to those. And you can ask any questions about what we're talking about or anything to do with digital marketing. So let's get to it. So when someone calls you to create a video for his or her brand, what are some of the first questions that you ask? Well, generally, we want to get to know um, not only the person, but their business. So we want to talk to them about how it is they interact with their customers, what their uh, current marketing is, if they have any, um, who their competitors are. We want to know basically the ins and outs of where they're at, and it helps us gauge the um, the position that they're in in the market, um, and and really get an idea of what we can do to help uh, build what they need to make sure that their audience is paying attention. Oh, gotcha. So okay. It's a it's kind of a fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So at the beginning, you're you're trying to establish one what they need out mm-hmm. of a video, yep. but also what they need to say yep. in the video. Is that kind of so? We want to know who their target audience is, mm-hmm. so that when we do uh, work on the script and we make the video, we're not only speaking to their target audience, but we're also um, showing them images that they want to see. You know, um, it's not a complete science, but we try to do the best we can Mm -hmm. Um, and so basically just really getting to know who they are what they are um, and and get to know the business so that we're not only portraying them Mm -hmm. but we're also portraying them to the right audience in the right way okay I would say the right image will attract the right person so we really want to focus on that right yeah you don't want to be kind of down a rabbit trail if we're going after uh, you know men shooting guns we're not going to have a bunch of that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good a good way to roll. <laughs> so, are there different types and approaches to creating video for a brand? Um, there are. So, beyond just um, as so, there's the commercials. Um, there's regular advertisement for television. There's web advertisement. Um, but what we're seeing right now is our trend um, in the industry is people are seeing advertisements and they're going, "Wow, that's an ad! I don't." Mm-hmm. want to watch that right so they're going to swipe past it they're going to skip over it they're going to tune out of it 
So I'm finding that some of the traditional methods of brand, uh, not branding, but uh, video production um, are being looked over. And now they're moving more towards the digital side, whether it's YouTube, online, you know, on your website, on Facebook, on Instagram, you know, any of those platforms that accept video is where we're going to start seeing uh, everybody going towards something that's more lifestyle oriented, more um, brand oriented rather than, hi, buy this now, now, now. <laughs> right. You know, so. like we, and we talk about this a lot where, so it looks more native to mm-hmm. the what people would expect to see versus busting out and being this right. like big signs and flashiness. It's more yeah. of a like, this is what you would expect to see on Facebook, but we just want it to stand out a little bit more. Yep. So kind of, and I say Facebook, but you know, a different, you know, on the different the networks, social media platforms. Yeah, so the social media platforms, um, people aren't going to watch an ad, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and it started out with images. Um, as it progressed, they were like, yeah, so throw up an image, but we're going to only allow you to put so much text on it. Otherwise, we know it won't work. Right. And so that has actually just gotten worse. Mm-hmm. The more you try to sell, the less you're, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. it does work still, but you're, you're going to run into some issues. Right. Um, whereas if you start out and you just tell them about you, you know, it's kind of an about me video, um, whether it's me, a business or me, you know, mm-hmm. uh, individual. But that I find is a little bit more effective to share who you are and connect with your audience. Okay. Um, in a world of, you know, social networking, we're seeing, you know, people are trying to connect on social networks. So... If you're like, hey, right now, three ninety nine, right now, mm-hmm. bye. Yeah. I think you're gonna have a little bit less than saying, hey, this is who we are. This is what we want. Uh, this is, you know, how we want to help you. What we want to do. This is our morals, our standards. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that's a little bit more of an effective approach. Because it really opens up a connection, mm-hmm. like you're saying, versus yep. it's not at someone. It's like opening yep. a two way street. So, well, how about if you tell me a little bit about your process? Well, after the initial interview where we go through the questions and we talk about what they need, um, generally at that point, we start out by planning. Um, Proper preparation is the best way to go. So um, the more planning, the more preparation in advance to the actual production, the better we're going to have a turnout because then we're going to understand pieces. We're going to see problems that come up before they happen. Um, Whereas if you're just jumping in, it's going to be a little bit more of a roller coaster Mm -hmm. and things are unexpectedly going to happen. (laughs) So with that, like, um, you know, you've made a lot of videos Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, my guess would be that sometimes business owners have an agenda. Um, Can you just tell me a little bit how you navigate that? Because I know, and I guess I'm putting you on the spot, but as marketers, we all deal with this Mm -hmm. where we're like, okay, this You need to build a strategy. This is what, you know, I would suggest. So, and then you want the business owner to be a part of it, but you don't want them to just like shoot from the hip. Like the the whole process is to avoid shooting from the hip and to create a strategy and a plan and a campaign that works. Um, But I'm guessing that you deal with what the rest of us deal with, where then the business owner is like, but yes, but you have to say this and you have to do it this way. Um, So with your process in mind, it's very, you know, um, what happens when the business owner kind of takes it when they want um well and it it is if that's part of their strategy though um i'm not one to say hey you're wrong right i'm more of a person to say well if that's part of it let's adapt Mm -hmm. you know this this overall video um and adjust it so that we're working together so really strategizing to figure out what the strategy is Mm -hmm. well (laughs) they know their business better than anyone right? right like so it's completely understandable mm-hmm. to take what they want to say or and probably go I mean I don't know about you but sometimes my first reaction is like oh, what you know and then it's like wait a minute um first of all business owners as you're watching that just means we care so much like yep. it just means like oh, I'm, I just want you to win yep. um, but I found that those business owners who push me to work a little bit harder at it their campaigns always turn out better. Yes. You know what I mean? Because I feel like, oh, why are you changing this? And what? You're not listening to me. Like, don't put so many words in there. And can you just like talk to the audience? And then they're like, but I still want this out there. Mm-hmm. So then it pushes us, I feel, to go work harder. at Okay, how can we do that? And yeah. still. Well, so things like taglines, mm-hmm. um, morals, uh, the company, the core values of a company are all going to be very important to portray in this. So that's something that I would never blink an eye and be like, oh, yes, of absolutely. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's when they're like, okay, but um, we need to tell them that we have 10 different products on sale right now and they need to buy it 
today. Right. And I say, okay, uh, well, firstly, if we're going to push a product, we should really only focus on the one that's most popular Mm -hmm. because then people will come in for that and leave with something else. Right. And that, hopefully, or all of it. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Um, But... Uh, so that's one way we avoid that, but it, often it's it's let's put as much into this as possible, and that is not going to be effective. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially in this area we're at now, where people are swiping past ads, you know, the more they jump past it, the more likely if you push more at them, they're going to just block it out. Right. Um, and even on television, we're finding that, uh, you know, the advertisements on television are going to be different than the advertisements on on a social network of any right. type or anything um, just because we've been trained over the course of time to listen to those. Mm-hmm. Um, so as that keeps going, we're going to keep seeing, you know, different areas for different videos. So I'm not putting down any specific area that's saying this is not the right avenue. This is not what you should do. I'm saying that choose the right avenue mm-hmm. and use the right video on it. Right. Um, So whether we're doing television production, which is very common, Mm -hmm. um, you know, we still want to show that open, you know, come in, let's make a relationship. And then we also have this on sale or, you know, this is one of our services. So Um, you can make a more, what I call a transactional video mm -hmm. where it's like you're trying to sell something. It's a sales type. So you can be more salesy on TV than you can because we're all, that's what we expect to see on TV. And, you know, there's no, it's a science that mm-hmm. nobody really has the answer to. And so, it changes and all yeah. the time. <laughs> so it, it's, nobody's really sure. Right. Um, but it is definitely a system that uh, you want to be aware of where you're advertising. Don't mm-hmm. take a TV commercial and put it on, you know, on, on Instagram. Um, people want to see pretty pictures on Instagram. They want a story. They want to follow a being. Even if your uh, being is an entity um, that's a business, it still needs to have a backstory, and that's mm-hmm. where Instagram comes in, right? Mm-hmm. And then Facebook is like, okay, this is a little bit more in depth. It's got a lot more fun options. So, you know, there you can have a little bit more fun, but still, people are going to recognize that ad as they're swiping and just cruise past it. Right. So, right. just being aware of what medium you're using is going to change everything. Okay. So, well, let's talk. Um, let's see here. So, and actually. Um, I do want to talk more about like the process and things, but my number one thing today that I personally, I mean, there's a lot that you, I'm excited for you to share, but the, my, my agenda is that I want to make sure to talk about like how people can use these, these videos because, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago we talked about, um, we talked here on chat and grow masterminds that, you know, these micro videos that mm-hmm. are like social media and they don't need, they should be a little more casual and things like that. But what we're talking about today is something that's more produced. It's yeah. more, you know, I mean, they're all thought out because even the micro ones are really thought out. But these are more of the at, what I call asset videos mm-hmm. because you put a lot of money into it. There's a lot of time that goes into it um, uh, during production and post production and everything. So as a business owner, you know, you're spending all these thousands of dollars on it and or hundreds or however much. But it's it's a significant investment. And one thing that we talk about a lot is just optimization of everything. And so if I spent a bunch of money on a video, um, how what are some ways that you could take an asset video and use it in multiple Absolutely. channels? Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and just to back up what you were saying earlier before I go into the next part, um, any social uh, area, you don't want to just have professionally produced, professionally produced mm-hmm. everywhere because it's going to become... Just something people are like, oh, yes, there's, you know, there's another amazing video. They want to see people in... in they want to see humans. Humans, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, even... And not that you're doing, not human on right. a commercial, but it just feels more human when it's more raw and right. rugged. Yeah, people want to see that selfie, mm-hmm. you know, system where you're like, check this out. We <laughs> just got the... It's awesome. Yeah. You know, versus, um, yes, today we're going to be... Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, so that's just to back up what you're saying. Absolutely. Um when it comes to the uh, asset videos, I call them brand videos. Okay. Um, and that's just, there's just so many different ways you can say it. Yeah. But, uh, um, with the brand videos, I like them because you can put them on your website. You can have a, a header, you know, on many websites now that plays. Oh, exactly. Cut it down into its smaller chunks so that it loops. Mm-hmm. Um, or that whole front slider. You can yeah. have it 
in the background, you can have it play out, or mm -hmm. there's a lot of ways to so, use that. Yeah, there's there's a million different opportunities mm -hmm. inside web mm -hmm. alone, um, but a lot of times you can use it for self-promotion. You can share it, you can put it online, you can put it on your networks, you can put it on your website, you can use it in your, your office if you wanted to have it rolling, mm -hmm. you know. Well, and just to footage. clarify, so we were just talking about not having, like if we were to create an asset video or a brand video, um, what, how would one go about that process? Because we were just talking about, we don't want anything salesy on social media. So I think it's safe to say if it's a TV commercial, you're probably, that's going to be about... TV. You could probably put it on YouTube. Well, yeah, it's YouTube would be good. And you and could it optimize could... it, too. You could have a link in there yeah. and an explanation and a, and a benefit, you know, yeah. analysis of what. Well, and, and the nice thing, like, if you're going with the YouTube or the AdWords, mm -hmm. um, if you're placing this commercial um, directly in front of another video that somebody's watching, at that point, you're taking it away from, say, the... The social side mm -hmm. and turning it into more of an advertisement platform. Sure. Um, so you just being aware of what digital realm you're in mm -hmm. is really going to make the difference. Uh, say you jump in and you're advertising on Hulu. You know mm -hmm. that is an ad. Right. We want to see ads. Mm -hmm. We've been trained on TV that that's what we see, so we want to see it when we're watching Hulu too. Sure. You know, it might be a little annoying because we're like, <laughs> we don't want to see it necessarily. We we're just trained to accept it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've submitted to the fact that that is right. just going to happen sometimes. But I mean, beyond just um, the overall uh, television, social, your website is huge. YouTube is huge. Um, Vimo. I mean, you can place it everywhere. And mm -hmm. actually, the more places it is, the more likely people are going to be able to have that, you know, come back to your site, mm -hmm. learn more about you. Um, with all the different platforms out there, it's... it's yeah, there's a, there's a lot of ways. Now, is it safe to, for someone like me, to suggest to people that, okay, if you're going to go and you're going to have one of these videos created... Um, and then just ask to take like a couple pieces out so mm -hmm. that you're able to use it in a more directed way. So like, let's say you're like, I'm going to create a brand story for you and so that you can use in commercials or you can use, this is going to be your website video to, yep. or about us video. Yep. Um, so is there a way so that we could potentially use it um, better and more effectively in social media? And if so, how would you suggest going about that? I would definitely say that uh, your long version. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at how National does video, and this is advertisements, this is national, uh, national, like national, um, national organizations. Oh, okay. okay. You know, like big, big companies. Okay, like um, enterprise size. They'll start out their ads with, um, they'll put up the money, produce this outrageously expensive ad mm -hmm. that you know everybody would love, but, um, and they'll run this 60 second version mm -hmm. um, online. There's a two-minute version, mm. so you're they're hitting all these different areas, and then as it keeps going, and especially on TV, they're going to take the 60 second, they're going to go down to 30, mm. and then they're going to go down to 15, and they're just reusing because they're like, okay, everybody's seen the ad by this point, mm -hmm. so they know what the punchline is, they know the story, now we can just hit them with a smaller portion of it, and it's going to save us a ton of money. Mm -hmm. Online, they're still getting the two-minute one, you know. So they have all these different options, and then they take it and put it on all these different networks so that when you see it online, you're like, oh, that's such a cool thing, and then you see it on TV, oh, wow, and then you get it on social, but it's more telling a story on social, mm -hmm. um, you know, so really it is about taking it and taking one big spot, turning it into multiple little ones, mm -hmm. and that way when you're, you know, putting it on TV or putting it on social network, you can choose the most appropriate version. Mm -hmm. um, uh, even taking it and doing one that's not based on audio, that is more visual, mm. you know, so that it's going to touch the Instagrammers. It's going to touch the, uh, you know, so you can put it on your web header without having to hear somebody talk. Right. Because I don't know if you've seen a video where somebody's, you know. <laughs> Please but don't, it doesn't, don't do that. But it doesn't work. <laughs> Please. <laughs> that's just embarrassing. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, and also, I just want to break in. Now's a great time to be asking some questions if you have any. So we will be fielding questions now. Um, I still have some more for you. Sure. But um, in the meantime, so uh, let's see. Where do you think that video is going in the coming year? 
I'd say in the coming year, um, well, with the way video is going, I would, I would say that we're looking at, you know, uh, Facebook, website videos, things like that, Instagram, um, they're all going to get bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to see more people putting more brands on there. Number one, because of the algorithms that, you know, the networks are doing so mm -hmm. that they can get it. Um, but also because now you're putting your video in the palm of somebody's hand where they're literally on it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that helps a lot. So versus TV where you're going to be in front of them a set number of day, hours a day. Mm -hmm. This is so much more. Right. So. And, and the phone is more bossy. Like, it I feel is, like yeah, TV, forceful. you have all this. Yeah, it's like, you know, I mean, if you want to know what the boss of someone's life is, take their phone away, right? Well, so with that, we have to watch the, I mean, we can scroll by, but it's there. Yep. Whereas when you're on TV, there's a lot more options to miss, skip the video, um, unless it's, well, you know, I mean, there's some placements that maybe not so much, but I just feel like it's not always the case, but that is more of an option, I feel, with TV mm -hmm. um, than it is maybe with the, on the mobile device. What are your thoughts about that? So you can't skip an ad unless you you know recorded it on TV. You mm -hmm. just have to sit through it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't skip it. Um, some ads on YouTube you can't skip anymore. You mm -hmm. know, uh, Hulu you can't skip. Mm -hmm. Different things like that. The only places you're really going to skip it is when it is supposed to be that social realm, which is why it's so important to have the life mm -hmm. of the company, not the cell. Yeah. Um, so I'd say when... With we're, as we go forward, especially with the geo-targeting and how that's mm, getting yes. more and more accurate, we're going to see the ability to have that app set up where, um, like I play a lot of games on my phone. I enjoy it. Okay, it's, yeah. Know, I'm not judging. It. But uh, <laughs> there's always videos that pop up. Right. There's always new games that they're trying to get me to download. You know, as they're getting better at this geo-targeting, I'm betting that we're going to start seeing more directed uh, videos mm -hmm. where we could actually be selling a product, you know, and and force ourselves in front of them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're like me, you look at that and you're like, oh, it's ad time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> watch TV for the next thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, we don't do. We watch. I watch every ad. Right. No. <laughs> well, I do. Actually, I, do, I am actually. obsessed with local ads right now. Like, absolutely obsessed. So I have. Yeah, I actually rewind and watch local ads nice. right now, just because I'm just so fascinated by. I just like to study them, and I'm really uh, interested in understanding how people can better. I'm all about optimization and everything connecting. So I don't like it if, like, if I were to put a bunch of money out and do TV ads, I'd hate for it not to somehow connect with yeah. everything else. And so I, I like to watch them, and I feel I feel a new series coming on where it's evaluate I might just bring someone on and we'll like break it down I, and if only I could figure out how to do that without putting the business on the spot because I don't want to piss anybody off yeah. but but I'm so fascinated by it because some of them are so good like I'm just like good job so I would love to talk about that yeah. but there are some that it's like okay so not to put them down but just like what how could this video have can you know video advertisement connect better to you know, so not pick apart the pick apart the production or mm -hmm. anything like that, but actually, like, how can you take this message that they're trying to give and connect it to um, you know online marketing? Have you seen anything, whether it's local or another ad that's just done that really well that you're just like, ah, you nailed it. Lots. Um, so that's one of the things. That, I mean, I love watching local television. Number one, it helps me understand the market. It mm -hmm. shows me who's advertising. So for me as a video producer, it's market research. Right. Um, so I'll actually watch the ads more so than the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, I do the same thing. I'm like, oh, the news is back oh. on. Oh, rewind. That was yeah. a great. <laughs> yeah. So um, I actually enjoy it. And I'm seeing some great ads coming out. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I'm seeing some bad ones. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the biggest things that I've noticed over my you know career, and I've worked in the television industry, mm -hmm. I've worked as personal, I've worked print, I've worked a lot of different places. Um, and the biggest thing that I saw that I think would make a huge difference is be aware of the production. Mm -hmm. um, production value doesn't have to be huge in mm -hmm. order to do a local ad. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's across the board in every state I've been in. You so know. production value, do you mean like it's a really nice ad? Like it looks really nice. Yeah. It looks really high quality. I have to say, I've seen one in particular, and I'm not going to say who it was, or I'm not even giving enough details to know, but it was one of the best produced commercials I've mm -hmm. seen around here, and I didn't like it at all. Because I felt like 
what do you want me to do with that? Like, you know, because I always have this eye for when I see a commercial or if I see an ad, I want you to tell me, like, how am I going to feel about this? Like, what's my benefit? And it was none of that. It was like, okay, so you love your stuff. Thank you. That's all I got out of this commercial. But it's so beautiful. So I still watch it every time. But And and the production value will catch it attention Mm -hmm. Um, but really where the the most important thing to do is to plan ahead be prepared to have that strategy make sure that you're not shooting you know Mm -hmm. a commercial and just throwing stuff in there Mm -hmm. Um, be be direct with it be precise so that everything comes out right Mm -hmm. Um, one thing that I saw a lot of in in the years was that people would do you know ten twenty thousand dollar ad buys where they're, you know, going to put it on TV, but they'd spend three, four hundred dollars on it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so you're going to put, like, the minimal into the actual production of the spot right. in order to throw $20,000. So now you're at $20,300. Uh, you know, it physically <laughs> pains me when small business, well, when any size business wastes money. And I see, and what you're telling me about videos, I 100% feel all across the board. So mm-hmm. if you get a crappy website and then you put a bunch of money to advertise it, like it hurts my guts. Deal. Like why yeah. are they doing, you know, I just feel like, so you, the money you did put into your website, how's that working? And then you put a bunch of money. It's kind of like when we do Facebook ads, we put money behind the high performers, yep. you know? And so... That's always my hope for business owners is that, is that what we'll do. So, again, it goes back to the production. It's like, here's a winner. Mm-hmm. Put a bunch of money behind it. You know, yeah. don't create a loser and then put a bunch of money. You know, it'd be like, you know, having the worst athlete in the world who didn't want to exercise and then go go run the marathon and we're sponsoring you to do it, Absolutely. you know. <laughs> well, and one thing I'm hoping it'll happen, um, and this is something that I just kind of would love to see. Um, where people are taking and they're harnessing, and instead of going from TV so much to a social network, mm-hmm. go from a social network to TV. Oh, yeah. Because it's that trick and that, that spike and that difference that you're going to have all the market research. From, it's like a focus group. Yeah. And you can be like, <laughs> The focus hey, group says this is the winner. <laughs> how do you feel about this one? Yeah. Not so much. How do you feel about that one? Ooh, you like it. Yeah. How do you like this one? Not so much. Let's do that one. Throw it on, you know, not yeah. throw it on TV, but you know reproduce or prepare it for that area Mm -hmm. and shoot that out. I think you'll have a better response. And, and those are just things that I look at going, Mm -hmm. okay, um, I'd love to see everybody succeed all the time. Yeah. Um, and it's not that you have to put thousands and thousands of dollars into a commercial. Mm -mm. I would say put a little bit more than you have to, you'll get a better return Mm -hmm. if you put a little bit more into it than, and, and throw money. It's just like a website. If you're going to put something into it, get a good one. Right. And throw money at it. Well, and let's just kind of talk about that too, because for one thing, I always say I'm the business owner's marketer. Like I get what it's like to own businesses Mm -hmm. and rely on marketing. And this is always, always true. And you business owners, I know you're listening to this. What I'm going to tell you, you're going to 100% agree with is that you have to pick between money and time Mm -hmm. and effort. So if you put the money in for this high quality production, that's what you can expect. Yep. If you're not going to put the money in, that's fine. You can still get a very excellent product, but expect that you better be a pro at doing that. Yep. So like if you're going to put not very much into it, I'll use website since that's my thing, but I, I'm sure it's true for for web, or for um, videos as well. But like if someone comes in and they're saying, okay, well, I don't want to spend any money on a website. Well, guess what? You could spend $200 a year and I and you can build your own website and you can have all the tools that I have to make your website awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, however, good luck. Like that's, you know, like you could do it and I, I'll show you how. But um, but if you are like, no, I want a good quality website, mm-hmm. um, then it costs more. Yep. And that goes for like everywhere in the middle. So it's like, OK, well, what if I spent half as much as I would spend on someone that I know is going to grind and kill themselves to make sure that. I, they will suck every value that they can out of this opportunity. If you spend half that, we'll expect that you're the one filling in the gap. Yes. So the business owner, whatever your budget is, know what the what the good quality, solid, not wasting money, but the top quality price is. Mm-hmm. And then just know that anything under that, you are filling in the gap or you are compromising on quality. So video, same thing. It's like, if you pay the money, you can expect that that person is going to be very skilled at it and they will take care of things. Absolutely. If not, then plan on 
developing the strategy, knowing your, you know, I mean, the video person is probably going to help you with that. But, um, you know, as a business owner, you're just going to have to fill in some gaps, I think. Well, at a certain level, so video production does not exactly equal marketing genius. You know, I mean, I've been working a long time in it. I'm not saying I'm it's a, what? It's not exactly a marketing genius. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, if you want to do a really good job, you have to have a solid marketing strategy. Oh, yeah. And and even if, uh, if you're not working with somebody that is your marketing strategy that's producing all of these uh, ideas to put on television, on TV, in print, uh, on web, you know, all of these things need to coincide. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're not doing that, if you're, you know, not following some sort of a brand guideline, some sort of a trim, like a idea that you really want to pursue, you're you're gonna have troubles. Mm-hmm. And I think well, just it. like in what your bio and what you say all the time, it's mm-hmm. like you want it to look the same across all marketing. Yeah, consistent and recognizable branding across all media platforms. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so mine was off the top of my head. Yeah. That was good. So yeah, for not being with Graphic yeah. Finesse, that was close. So oh, yeah. So and I think speech. everybody that is, it's just so like if I I always say if I can make, I, if I can make business owners do anything, it would be understand who they're talking to, mm-hmm. talk to those people, and then keep it consistent. Yeah, absolutely. So, and and yeah. working, so I worked in television, I worked uh, in print, I worked in, in a little bit of web here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I found was that some companies would go to each individual place. They'd go to the television station and they'd get an mm-hmm. ad produced and they'd go to the print shop and they'd get a, you know, they might say the same words. Mm-hmm. But the issue was that nothing actually was consistent. Right. So their television did not represent their print, mm-hmm. and their print did not represent their web and vice, you know, mm-hmm. all the way through. Um, so what that says to me is that they're putting out all these different um, images that are not working together. Mm-hmm. So at that point, you might as well be advertising for something else. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> then you're just confusing people on what your image is. Yeah. You know. A logo is not a brand. Correct. A logo is your brand, part of your brand identity. Mm -hmm. Your brand identity is all the colors, everything. And the message. The message. Mm -hmm. Well, your brand is the message. It's who you Mm -hmm. are. It's the backbone. It's the love. It's Mm -hmm. it's this heartfelt. It's your heartbeat. Why I'm doing this. Um, You know, and then, then you have. Brand identity, which is the colors that people start to associate with that love and that feeling and that passion. And then you have the logo, which is just another little piece to be like, remember, mm-hmm. this is us. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you could throw your logo on three different things that look completely different and they're not going to do any good for you. Right. You know, so that's, I mean, that's kind of my take on it. Well, is- and I think it's, it's fair to say too, and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, that so when a business owner is putting any money into anything or time or effort, when it comes to marketing, either have a team that works cohesively together mm-hmm. in these different areas. Um, there's a lot of branding companies that are really good at this where, you know, from my side, when someone walks in with um, design standards or style standards, I'm it's just like, oh, the sky's open. I'm so happy. Um, another is like, here are our messaging. You know, like this is what we want to be saying. Um, I just got some information from one of our clients this last week. And it's almost like seeing the perfect font to me. You know, right. it's just like so beautiful um, because good marketers will want that. Good marketers will say, thank you for caring enough about your messaging. Thank you for caring enough about your audience and your strategy that you're bringing me on board with yeah. what you're trying to say, you know. And again, focusing on the audience um, and not, you know, being too self-focused, but understanding the voice and the yeah. message and knowing that your whole team is on board. Like if I had, if I had that kind of a messaging standard put together, which we generally do. And then I hired someone and they were just like doing their own thing. They'd be gone. Like right. I would be like, if you, like, if you don't want to listen to what that guy said about this, then you, that's, it's a team. Like it, it'd be just like hiring staff. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's someone that you trust to give you advice or to do it for you mm-hmm. that, you need to trust them with your baby, like that's your business. And so I think that's really valuable just to remember that with video, it's just the same as all the other pieces. You just, you have to bring that, this, those standards in and keep it at the forefront. And, and, you know, it's okay to rebrand every now and again, you (laughs) know, if, if, uh, 
start out and work with it and you'll see it grow. And as it grows, it'll build. Mm -hmm. um, as you talked in the beginning, like some of the questions we go through in the beginning, it definitely identifies whether or not they have their mission statement, whether mm -hmm. or not they have these little pieces that come together so that like, okay, you don't have a mission statement, we can definitely start working on one mm -hmm. or at least get something that's consistent so that it mm -hmm. goes through, you know, taglines, different things like that. You know, if it's not there already, mm -hmm. we can help build it, you know, we'll, or at least get an idea to start with and then hopefully we take that into the next stage. Yeah. Um, so it is kind of one of those situations where you, you just got to feel out each individual. Um, mm -hmm. Not everybody has that, that huge budget to go with some right. of these huge branding companies. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when they're like, yeah, it'll be $40,000 for us to build you a logo and some brand guidelines and, you know, put all your different stuff in a nice little booklet. Right. That, uh, comes Which out. is why I don't have a booklet yet. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> same as everybody else. Right. But, you, you know, know, that's my dream someday. Well, and that's... But there's a lot of, like, how-tos. Just, like, if, mm -hmm. if you really... Like, I've worked with a lot of people who are... They're just scrappy. Like, they'll go build their own website and they'll come to me and I'll be like, Awesome. You yeah. know, and so I'll walk them through it until they're able to come and we can, you know, put something Building, big yeah. together. Um, same with what you're talking about with the vision mission. I mean, this has been around for, you know, decades. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's so much uh, training and uh, worksheets and exercises that you can go through. You just need to take a day or two and just really maybe hole in and, you know, run out. Yeah. hotel room or something and I'm going to go have my corporate retreat now <laughs> some of the time when I have to think really hard I go to a coffee shop yeah. where it's noisy and actually mm -hmm. helps um, where I'm just like I'm not in front of my computer I'm not in front of you know my dogs I'm, I'm just somewhere completely foreign mm -hmm. um, usually not foreign but you know somewhere that's <laughs> I don't go every day it changes your space <laughs> right and, yeah. and, it, and it helps me collect um Actually, my shop at home, mm. I go out into my shop and I start building something mundane. Just It's just going through the actions and doing something. And all of a sudden, I'm like, mm -hmm. I run inside and I'm like, Gina, Gina, mm -hmm. oh my God, I have the greatest idea. This is amazing. And she's like, what now, Aaron? Mm -hmm. you know, so I think putting together a vision and mission statement, the biggest takeaway is just give yourself some time to think and some steps to go through because there are definitely... Um, you know, people have done it so many times before and done it well, and mm -hmm. they've done it poorly. And so kind of instead of doing it wrong a bunch of times, trying to fumble around on your own, I would highly recommend using some of these tools to do it right maybe the first time and move forward faster. So, um, okay, next question. And again, if anybody has any questions either regarding videos or anything to do with digital marketing, please uh, feel free to ask. So, um, if you think about a business that you work with, um, one that you care about a ton and you want nothing more than to see it succeed, if you were the boss of the world and you could just make this business do it, um, win it, uh, what would you make them do? What would that be? The one thing that I would want businesses to do, I mean, we've been talking about it the whole time, invest time and energy into your overall picture. Make sure that your brand is correct. Make sure that you're speaking right to not verbally so yeah. much, but you know through your imagery, through your brand, through your colors. Um, all of these things are very important to how things you know how people perceive you. You know, orange. You know, it's amazing color. People love it. But you know, if you look at orange and, and look at the color theory behind it, it's somewhere between red and yellow, which is you know, kind of angry and kind of happy. So it's just like weird, <laughs> odd, joyous thing that happens. And like, you know, the statistics of, uh, of nonprofits using orange in their marketing actually increases their mm -hmm. what they get, you know, is, uh, in donations. So yeah. weird things like that. So orange, you know, blues, all these different colors, they're going to make a difference in how people feel when they see your work. So that's why it is important to have branding, mm -hmm. uh, to have that brand identity. Um, so that would be if I had one thing to change about the world and say that even the smallest company should focus uh, some time towards branding mm -hmm. and making sure their brand identity is correct and that they're giving out the right image. Um, even when producing videos for somebody that has literally nothing and they come to me as a production artist and they're like, please, I need a video and I go, okay, do you have a website? And they're like, yes. So I go to the website. If the website looks nice, I will take those colors, 
will take that, you know, mm -hmm. everything and move it over to the video mm -hmm. so that it follows through. Nice. And, and even with graphic design, if we're doing anything like that, it's just trying to create that consistency throughout yeah. the whole thing. So there are ways to make sure it works without going to the $40,000 guys. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's okay, you know, and, and it really depends on how you want to go about it. But if I could change one thing that everybody should do, it's focus a little bit on your brand identity mm -hmm. and that way people can recognize everything. Yeah. So. Well, not to hound too much on the whole vision and mission thing, but I just, I've just i always been such a proponent of it. And I know anymore, um, I've heard a lot of leaders in digital marketing kind of talking about the idea that it's not as important to have like a vision and mission because X, Y, Z, you know, mm -hmm. and I would say that the advantage to, I mean, first of all, a hundred percent, I think everybody should have a vision and mission. Um, but I think that what they're trying to say is that, and I talk about this so much, but a lot of times business owners have their agenda instead of speaking to their audience. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, what does my audience want to hear right now? They're saying, this is what I want to tell my audience. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, I feel like a vision and mission would um, maybe push that. Um, maybe people would be more likely to do push bit. their own agenda. Yep. So, but the the ultimate way to do it would be to create a vision and mission that says anything that we do points at that. Yeah. However, when you're creating content, speak to your audience. Like, stop. Like, put that aside. Everything you say should be getting you to there, but um, it don't use it as content, you right. know, like don't say, I mean, you can use it as content, but you have to spin it. You yeah. need to go, okay, this is my agenda. I want everybody to know how great we are and this is where we want to go, but you have to resist that. You just have to go, what, what, you know, what does my audience want to hear? Absolutely. And, you know, and, and on my end, on a marketing side, you know, half the way we actually do that is to just listen, mm -hmm. um, you know, when we sit down with the questionnaire, we might be asking questions, but it's the answers that are going to formulate where we're going. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, getting to know everybody, getting to understand who they are and where they're at as a business and what they've done in the past and what they hope to do in the future and just, you know, what kind of coffee they like. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, getting to know someone, getting to know the business, getting to know the people involved so that you can, you can actually work with them and, and enjoy it. Um, and I think that's, you know, rather than me going in and saying, you need to do this, 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 and this, I don't have those answers until I listen to what they have to say. That's true. And then I formulate based on that because, God, I wish I was a professional in every uh, industry, right? I'd be like, uh. <laughs> That'd be, That's exhausting. Oh, man. There's so many people who are so good at stuff. I just, I'm one of those, like, I like... I like my little play yard, and then I like to bring other people yeah. in to play. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, you know what? And I just want to kind of talk about that just real quick, and then we're going to kind of end here. But well, I, I do have one more very important question. But um, so with that, I feel, okay, so I am a business owner. This was what I, and I talk a lot about how I hate hiring web developers, and I, like it's still, I hate it <laughs> because we bring people in. Yeah. And I love the people that I've worked with, but the process, I just, I hate it so mm -hmm. much. And I don't know why. It's just developers, right? And so I love developers, but I don't, like hiring is just really difficult. So I feel for business owners when they're going through that process. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that process was why I learned how to build websites. So um, I feel like from a business owner standpoint, over the years, I developed a sense that marketers don't want to give answers. Like I always, and I'm just going to be real here. Like I always felt like, and I still do sometimes when I go on to websites and, and I want an answer and they're like, well, sign up and I'm going to call you and then I'm going to call you every day for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And I hate that. Like, I just feel like um, just, you know, if I was a real estate agent and I had a home search site, you know, we're and we talked about this last week, like we always gave away all the information. And then mm -hmm. if someone found something that they wanted, they would come to us. Absolutely. You know, it was magic. But I feel like marketers have to straddle this line between um, you know, now that this is what I do all the time, um, I get that what you just said, and that's what made me think of it, is that a lot of times it's hard to have the answer or the, what solution we would even recommend before you talk to the person. So what people, like what a business owner wants is like, just give me all the information. Mm -hmm. I will look through it. And if I feel like you're the one I want to call, I will call you. Absolutely. And yet on our side, we're like, 
but there's so much, you know, like, what do I possibly tell you? Because there's like, it's almost like, remember, I don't know, maybe I'm going to date myself, but did you ever see those books when you were a kid that it was like, you'd read two pages and it's like, if you want this to happen, go to page 47. And if you want, like, I feel like that's a marketer, (laughs) like that's our life, you know, it's like, well, if you tell me this, then actually I'm going to flip through the book because either that or I'm going to sit and lecture you about SEO. Like you pick, you know, like you're not going to want to hear what I have to say about marketing right. because it's super boring and you're going to be like, no, I just want you to do it. But so balancing that I think is really difficult. And I think it triggered when you started telling me like, oh, well, you know, we ask questions and then, because I was almost like I was having a flashback, like, oh, you know, it's that marketer thing right. that we always say, but oh, now no. I get it. Now I understand why, mm-hmm. you know, so did you have, did you ever see those books? Yes, I okay. love them. Actually, so it makes me laugh. I had an email come through and, and uh, one of my friends, he does some coding and, and he emailed over A and B. And then in the next thing, he answered a question, if to A. <laughs> I send those emails all, all the time. I was like, you're yeah, definitely <laughs> I know. the coder. It's like, yeah. so cool. <laughs> you know what I do now? Oh my gosh, this is so bad. So, because people want answers yeah. and I want to give them it. Like, I just want to empower them, but they don't want to hear what I have to say. Like, I always feel like glossing over. They don't, mm-hmm. like, they checked out two sentences ago. So I've started doing like, here's the actual email. This is what I recommend, the end. Mm-hmm. And then like below, I'm like, see below for, you know, (laughs) for more detail, because it is, it's like, if this happens, then I would say that this is happening. And I mean, it's, I just don't think there's any answers in marketing. Mm -hmm. I think that it's a whole lot of questions that are if asked correctly, Mm -hmm. uh, you might be able to find a solution for, but there's no wrong answer. Right. Um, like finding a way to market a product or a service, um, that's genuine and heartfelt. I think is the closest answer you can get mm-hmm. to being correct without, you know, without going in so deep. Right. right. Or just throwing out stuff. Or just, yeah. Or just like randomly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love confetti. Yeah. And if you're yeah. throwing around <laughs> ideas like confetti, I really should get to know them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, before my, you know, most important question, is there anything else that you'd like to be sure that business owners, entrepreneurs, or brands know before we're done today? You know, I think, um, keep that consistent. It's all about consistency, um, across the board, um, whether it's friends, family, and life in general, uh, just make sure that you're, you're operating, um, and be prepared to be sporadic. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, yeah, because things change so fast. Change. And you have to test. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's like a whole nother hour, but yeah, so te- yeah, yeah. testing yeah. is a whole nother it's thing. Like just, just have faith, move forward. I don't know how else to say it. Just, mm-hmm. just be brave. Love just people. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm a huge foodie. Okay. And, so I, and we love to talk about food. So, what is your favorite dish or ingredients? Tacos. Tacos? Just, what kind of tacos? Uh, any kind of taco. No, like soft shell, corn tortilla, flour tortilla. I like tacos on salad. I like tacos on corn chips. I like corn tortilla tacos. I like soft shell tacos. And none of them are your favorite. It's all like uh, exactly the same. Well, I wouldn't say they're exactly the same. They they have different shapes. No, I know they're the same, <laughs> but like you do not have a favorite taco. No, I don't. Um, I absolutely love tacos. I would eat them on a regular basis and do Uh um, because they're easy and they're easy to heat up. Yeah. And you can put literally anything. I had a taco omelet the other day. It was actually pretty good. I was surprised. I mean, weird stuff. So do you usually use corn tortillas or flour tortillas? Um, I mean, do you make your own or do you go get them? Well, I don't make tortillas. No, no, no. But tacos. Do you make your own tacos? Yeah. Okay. So do you typically use a salad? What's your um, vessel? So, uh, say for dinner, I'm going to go with a salad, okay. um, more often than not, maybe some corn chips in there. Okay. Um, and then for like lunch, I'll do a soft shell taco just cause it's easier. Soft shell fast. corn or um, flour? It depends. You know? okay. Um, I would probably go flour more often just okay. because They're it's bigger and, it's bigger yeah. and it's easier to transport yeah. and, and you can eat while driving. <laughs> but you don't, I'm but, sure. No, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if somebody else is driving, you're still not going to make a mess with the, the flour tortilla taco. True. Same, True story. Same. Okay. All righty. So spicy or not spicy? Uh, spicy. Okay. The more right. jalapenos, the better. Awesome. Okay. So thank you so much again for joining us. Yeah. Thank you so much for everybody for listening or watching. And um, the best is yet to come. Yeah.